Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to see you. Richard and I have been buddies in the same field for at least 20 years, right? Yeah. Yes, 20. <laughs> oh my gosh. Working along the same grounds, like with enameling and uh, soldering and cold joints and yep. you know you, you moved into go these gorgeous gorgeous pieces but you know before we start I so there's Richard but I want to tell a story of how I met you uh, okay do you remember um I, I know I, I took a class with you in 2003 there at Art Unraveled I think that's where we met but is so my before that before that so you were at selling and I was selling. It was like after all the teaching and we were out relaxing and your wife, Jane came by and she had on one of your pieces and she walked by and it was a cold joint and it was movable. You pulled a piece and it had all this mechanical movement to it. And I was like, oh my gosh, where did that piece come from? So she brought me back over to you. We wove our way and there you were. And you had a lot of sculptural pieces Figure, one was a figurative and it was on a record player and when right. we played the record she danced in a circle yep something like that yeah yeah that's my memory and then i think you bought one of my very first pieces too that it was like a little rocket ship that had a light in it yep. that, uh, you press press the button and the light came on oh my I god always... i loved it i always yeah. told you you should teach a class in that Still have it. <laughs> Could <But laughs> happen, you never know. I mean, I, yeah, a lot of ideas come along and then you forget to execute. So yeah. thanks for the reminder. Yeah, yeah. Well, I saw you on on a in a magazine before we met. Uh, I think it was like Somerset Studio Magazine or something. You had an advertisement in there about. I just remember you were doing something from Hacienda Mosaico. Oh. You're doing a class. I wanted to take the class. So I wrote and there was only one seat available. So both Jane and I couldn't go. So I ended up instead of going to your workshop, I went to one with Keith Lobu. Oh, yeah. And, and that, you went teach there now. That turned out to be pretty important because, well, two things. One was I learned how to do etching with Keith and I was still doing etching and I just did an online workshop on etching. So, you know, it just never has gone away. And then the other important thing there was that in that class was Linda Young and she had just done her first year of Art Unraveled. And she said to me, why don't you come teach at Art Unravel? I go, why, why can I teach? But I ended up teaching a photography class. So we made this oatmeal box camera, you know, oh. um, and that was my, but she started me in the whole teaching thing. And the next year I taught some cold joint thing or other. And then, you know, one or two classes and then it just kept snowballing from there until uh, it got really pretty crazy as you know I, I think 2019 i had 14 workshops or something it was like traveling all the time and it was really becoming too much so the the thing about the pandemic for me was that it stopped everything couldn't travel mm -hmm. and you know i always said oh yeah i had to do an online class but i would never take the time because i'm always prepping for another class and mm -hmm. how it is but then that just opened up the door for the whole um, online class thing. And that's been really uh, well received. And I don't know if I'll ever go back to traveling. Not, not like it was for sure. You know, one or two places maybe, but none of that crazy uh, 14 workshops. Uh, oh. and, you know, so, so, you know, I'm gonna actually talk about it like as if no one knows you right now, even though so many people know Richard. So Richard, is an artist in this intentional metalsmithing book. That's your new book? Yeah, this is the cover of it. And here's the back. So it's huge. Richard, no, it actually probably is just, it's just an eight by, it looks huge, but it's regular size. Eight oh, by okay. 11, yeah. Probably just the way I'm holding it, the angles, you know, with, oh, <laughs> you know, we, our jewelry pieces look like they're this big too, right? <laughs> right. So Richard, is this incredible, if you don't know his work, most people know Richard, he is this incredible 
I say goldsmith. He does the most meticulous silver work. He is really known all over the world. He has taught in Alaska all the way to, um, oh my gosh, uh, Italy, right? Or in Mexico. So, so if you don't know Richard, check out his work. I mean, his work is just beautiful in itself. So first of all, as an artist, Richard is very inventive. Secondary, as a teacher, I, it's my opinion that he is one of the very few goldsmiths left to teach that really fine, fine work. So I, that's what I, I say about Richard. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I never really considered myself a goldsmith but, or even a silversmith, really. But Robert Danzig once said to me, well, smith just comes from the word to smite. So do you smite metal? Well, then you're a metal smith or a goldsmith. <laughs> I'll take that as a very fine compliment. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah teaching it yeah. easily. So which one comes easier for you, teaching or building and selling your work? Oh, wow. Well, um, there's a lot of work to teaching that probably people don't realize how much preparation there is. And, you know, and you're trying to de design things that can be done in a particular amount of time. So you're working on the pacing and then trying to f overcome all the little obstacles you think people might have. So you, you, you know, you're thinking. So the teaching takes a lot of work, um, but it, it's very rewarding too to see people make things while you're there in their presence and, and just sort of, enjoy that process go through it with them uh, so that's rewarding but making things is something that I've done pretty much all my life making something or other uh, you know even as a kid making little model airplanes and things like that and it's just I always have made stuff so I, I can't imagine a life where I'm not making something and of course it, the reward is if you can sell it because you know you want to that's sort of the validation that your work has uh, been accepted and approved. And it also keeps you going because you got to have some money to do, make the next thing. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't think you have a problem selling your work. Where do you sell your work? You know, I used to sell a lot at the venues where I was teaching and very little online. But since the pandemic, um, mostly through Instagram, I would say the, the largest volume is Instagram uh, and Facebook to some extent, but I think Instagram has probably been the biggest uh, sales medium or platform for me. And so do people, do, do they just tag you and ask to buy your work or do you put up a show once in a while? I'm asking for the benefit of other people too. Oh, no, I, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I try to post something daily and then everything is on my website for the whole purchase so the instagram is just kind of the the way to present the work and then they link to the website for the purchase but um I, that's pretty much the process same for facebook oh it's such beautiful work too oh my gosh i noticed how you're building with a lot of hearts lately so yeah. your talisman are hearts right what's that up to um i don't know exactly where that came from it just I, I don't know. I guess the shapes uh, works and is, I don't know, somewhat of a romantic thing, I suppose, in a way, you know. Yeah. Influenced very early by the work of Thomas Mann. And he, he uses hearts a lot. And I, and, I, and another person was Karen Michelle, who, who used a lot of hearts in her work. And I don't know, I just thought it was a nice shape that lends itself to a, a lot of treatments and different things. And, you know, you can you can go from black hearts, you know, have a little bit of a an edge on them on the dark side and then you can go in very light cheery red ones and um it's just a shape that seems to work well for me and that sells pretty well i mean during valentine's i, I couldn't even keep up it was just you know so much demand oh, from. oh my god that's so nice to hear well you deserve it your pieces are amazing in that way now listen though talisman that heart shape is a talisman for you i mean because i found there was only a period of time where I was building hearts and it was when I had significant people die in my life and I literally kept them in my, my pockets and I built hearts all the time. So I think that it's like either, you know, I, I just think it's an important, you know, to Karen spreading love to Thomas Mann, to you, it's like putting love out there in the world 
is a beautiful statement, you know? Well, thank you. You're pretty insightful. So I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. I don't think much in those terms, you know, like talisman and the woo woo. Yeah, and, yeah you know, I do all the woo woo. You're, you're a goldsmith, <laughs> remember? <laughs> right. You're, you're the, the, uh, the more mystical side of things. I, I really like that part of it, but yes, I really do. It's, um, yeah, you know, and I like to wake up and build as an artist, but you were trained as an artist and not a craftsman, right? Uh, well, I. I started off uh, at college, you know, trying to do some art and found I really wasn't very good at two dimensional kind of stuff. Okay. And, um, but I got a job after I got out of the military, I, I got a job with a metal sculptor as an mm -hmm. assistant. And that's where I learned how to do soldering and bending, heating metal and the patinas and the buffing grinding. I was doing all the dirty work, you know, this, this is in Carmel. California and he was up in the top of the gallery there greeting people and he was really good friends with Clint Eastwood he used to come in all oh, the time nice. so I'm dungeon working away <laughs> you know, he's, uh, hearing some shotguns go off upstairs right yeah. like make but, my day <laughs> exactly but it worked out really well for me because that's where I, I learned a lot of metal work really and but it, I never really considered jewelry uh it, I, I did sculpture after that, but uh, it wasn't until 2002 when I took that workshop with Keith that I, I felt like I could maybe do jewelry. And because my work was kind of sculptural and big anyway, you know, it fit that, um, that sort of um, medium that Keith kind of practiced. So I fell in with that. And then having the skills of working with metal, it came pretty easy and I just you know, kept honing that and working at it. And then and then when I moved to Santa Fe, of course, the turquoise and the silver, you know, you can't live in Santa Fe and not be influenced by that whole Southwest kind of vibe. Um, and I really like that. I still love turquoise and work with it, but I've found lately that I uh, can do the work with other kinds of uh, stones. And uh, I'm still not a fine jeweler. You know, my, my work's pretty still rough and, uh, rugged and maybe masculine. I think uh, a lot of people have said that. So uh, it's not as refined as, as uh, I find you would do it, but um, but your work's rather rough too. And, and uh, so I think that's where we serve uh, mm -hmm. our kindred spirits in that way. Mm -hmm. Yes, right, of uh, being expressive. You know, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily interested in setting diamond rings. We both know that if we want to work with gold and set diamonds, we could be, we could make a lot more money than we do now, right? <laughs> but we're, we like what we do. So we're being authentic to ourselves. Yeah, right. I think so. Yeah, so that's actually why you were so, you know, you were so important to me to have you in intentional metalsmithing because this really is, and I'm so, you know, I'm just so appreciative because you're a person where you really build your authenticity. You're not, just putting it in so you could sell something. You're not building a piece because it has diamonds. You know, I've talked to many, many jewelers. So this is really from the artist perspective. And I've, I've talked to goldsmiths that set diamonds and they're like, why would I work with silver? I could make 10 times the money in gold, you know? And I'm like, the wrong answer to me, you know? Because really it's, it's about loving what you do and being fulfilled and the enjoyment of it, right? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, you come from that angle. Yeah, the, the enjoyment is in the making, you know, I think. Uh, and there's always another piece to make, right? You never run out. <laughs> That's true. Yes. Yeah. So you're actually, um, so you're actually going to be, okay, so wait, so you studied, so you actually studied then in a craft school, not an art school, you said, right? Is that what you got? Uh, I, I went to university, but I ended up with a degree in linguistics, not art. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah, no. So then you no. work this way. Okay. But Interesting. The, the, uh, the metal working just was kind of on the side at the time. I mean, what, I, I had to leave that because it just wasn't paying enough when I was um, married with two children. Being an assistant just didn't pay very well. So I had to go back to college and got a degree and then the teaching credential and 
you know, on the second degree yeah. and all that. Yeah, yeah. But I worked, did the, uh, some sculptural work on the side. And then the when I finally had a chance and you know, when I retired, or cl I was close to retirement, looking for something else to do. Yeah, I remember and, that's when I met you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, good. Oh my gosh. Well, and, then, so what are you, so, okay, you're talking about, um, You've been in this for the long haul. How do you stay inspired? Like, how do you stay interested and inspired? What turns you on that way? Well, I'm always looking for something to make. And so when I run out of ideas, uh, sometimes I will look at other people's work, really, and, and, just, and look at it and say, what is it about that piece that I like? And then how can I make that my, my own? You know, I mean, Picasso said, you know, good artists uh, borrow and great artists steal or something like that. Well, <laughs> yeah. I steal an idea, um, but it's, it's still a, a way for me to, to use it in my work in a, hopefully a, a unique way sometimes. So well, I think when you work through those things, you learn from somebody else's inspiration, you learn something more that you want to do. I, I find that. And then sometimes um, I'll just see a piece of work or sometimes it's just a stone that said, oh, this needs a special kind of treatment. So you think, well, okay, well, how can I do that differently than I did last time? Um, and I really like uh, hinges and clasps and mechanisms and things like that. So, you know, I'm always trying to figure out a way to incorporate some of those things in there to make it more fun, little hidden boxes and things like that. that uh, so just challenges um, of a way to present the material in a new way, a different way. But then again, sometimes the old things come back and people really like it. You know, I mean, you can obviously do a lot of things with hearts and a lot of people like it. So it's how to how to make it interesting for the next the next piece. But uh, if I didn't do this, I don't know what I would do. I, I'm not the kind of person that can just sit around and watch TV all day or, you know. Um, so uh, I feel sorry for people who retire and don't have anything to do. Oh, yes, you're right. Oh, my gosh. Well, good for you. Yeah. Isn't that the goal though? <laughs> or I guess just to be free and do what you want to do. So yeah. when you retire, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, if you're in a field that you like, what are you retiring from, you know? You retire right. from teaching though. What, so what would you do? You know, one of the questions that comes up with a lot of people, so Richard, you know, you definitely have your your core, your classes online that you have, but um, when, what, this question has come up with a lot of people lately. Like, how do you get yourself unstuck if you're stuck? Is that what you do is you go and look at other people's work or do you, is there something else that you do? Have you ever been really stuck? Um, really stuck. Sometimes I get to a point where I, I feel like I don't have any ideas. You know, I'm looking, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feeling like I need to try something new, but to actually get stuck, uh, I can't, I can't really think of. Go ahead. You always can find a way to be unstuck. So that's cool. <laughs> that's why you're so prolific, probably. Oh, I don't, well, maybe. I mean, I'm not as prolific, I don't think, as you are, but. <laughs> I am pretty prolific. That's right. Yeah, I you, am pretty prolific. You're turning out a lot of work. And if I can do one piece a day, I feel like that's, I'm accomplishing a lot. Uh, but I see other people doing quite a bit more. Mm -hmm. you know, I think there's stages, right? There's stages where you want to rest more. There's stages where you want to be in your studio more. There's stages where I want to do big pieces. There's stages where I just want to do little ones, you know. And and there, I have other interests too. You know, I mean, I I, I do like photography, and that's an area that I you know I would like to pursue more. But the the jewelry seems to keep me so busy that um, I. I neglect doing the photography, but I've taken some workshops recently and, and uh, you know, taken some trips where I can do some photography. I really like doing these abandoned building photo photographs uh, that I've been able to do mostly in Belgium. Oh, that sounds incredible. Have you posted them? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have a separate uh, Instagram account for photography. Oh, it's just. Yeah. Oh, so. 
you know what? You just totally muted out right when you only when you gave your Instagram site. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Um, the Instagram is just Richard Sally Photography, Richard.Sally.Photography on Instagram. So that's, yeah. Um, so um, that is one avenue. And then the other thing, uh, I, I did a few workshops in Florence, Italy with uh, uh, metal smiths in Florence with uh, Monica Cardoni uh, and did some goldsmithing there. And while I was there, I, I came across uh, these craftsmen who are really masters in their craft, right, right next to where we were staying. There was this little man who had a, a little uh, workshop and he restores antiques and with gold uh, leafing and he's a really oh. and he got me inspired to thinking about all these men who are at an age where they're going to be retiring and leaving their practices so i wanted to to document uh, his work and find other craftsmen i could so i wanted to make a book and so i went to to florence last march with a friend of mine who's a photographer from belgium and we interviewed and photographed uh, 13 different craftsmen and now and just had the book published um, except i really think it's only half done i really need to add about another 10 to 12 artists you so. got it half finished already i think this book is incredible i'm so excited about it because you know what you're right it's like i feel like in the united states maybe about five to seven years ago that our goldsmiths in the United States retired without, you know, yes, with documentation, you know, but with books, but, you know, not necessarily a full. I think this is going to be amazing. I am super excited about this for you. You seem well, like the right person to do it. Well, good. I, I, I'll uh, have to send you a copy. Oh my gosh. So you're half finished? Well, I have it. I have it published now of the 13 that we interviewed. Uh, so there were 13 interviews and about 4,000 photographs that we had to edit and put it into a book form. So do you have your um, book finished, Richard? Well, I, it's it's published in its current form, but I oh, want good. I want to expand it. I really want to make it a book of about 25 rather than 13 artists. So can people buy your previous book or are you discouraging them? No, it's I'm not ready to sell it yet. Okay. Okay. So, so you're still it's a project upcoming that we're excited about. Oh my god, I'm so excited. So you're gonna go back. So I can't believe that you're halfway done and you, you organized everything already. So now your plans are to go back and you're gonna interview more people. Right. Interview more when people. are you going back? Actually, I'm going to go back um, next month to meet with those 13 artists and give them one of the copies of the book that I have so far. And I meet with a translator uh, about uh, getting some more people, another dozen people for the book. And I want some women this time, um, even though there aren't a lot of master women, you know, because that just was not apprenticeships that were available, you know, 50 right. years ago. But right. there are a lot of women now who are who are up and coming uh, in the crafts, and uh, so I know who, uh, there are women jewelers. I know there's a woman who makes violins, and so I want to I want to interview them and see what um, they can contribute as far ongoing as these other master craftsmen leave the business, leave the industry. Uh, and close their doors, who's gonna take their place? That's oh, I love that, Richard. That is a, you know, that's something that is, something that is so useful and something that is so profound and something that definitely needs documenting. So I'm very excited for you. You know, it's like, it's like we talk about, you don't, you know, probably a lot of these guys, they don't even realize what a master that they are. You know, they know they're, they're good at what they do. You know, it's, it's like when I say to you, you know, I, I consider you a goldsmith of, you know, in the United States, even though you work with silver, but um, 
you know, it's, it's like you, you always go, no, 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 no. You know, it, you can never be rich enough. No rich person says they're rich because nobody feels like they're rich enough. No one feels like they're no enough information or very few people do, you know? Well, we had Alan Revere who definitely, you know, felt it, but. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. People like Alan who are retired now, you know, he's, he's out there still spreading his information, his books are, you know, still uh, in, Oh yeah, Tim McRae, uh, Tim McRae, yeah. Tim McRae, Tom Mann, of course, still out there. Good. Yeah. Nice, so. nice. Oh my gosh, good. Yeah, I know a couple of goldsmiths that really work in, you know, they have jeweler stores or they work in jeweler stores and, you know, they are really into diamonds and that precision and casting, so. Excellent. Now, okay, so what are you, so that's what you're passionate about working with right now is getting all this documentation and learning a lot as you go, right? So, yeah, I actually leave the country to get away from the jewelry bench so I can do something else because otherwise. Oh my God, I love that. And you're using your photography skills for your book, right? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Good. Okay. Well, thanks for yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. I definitely want one of your books and I definitely would love one of your books right now, but you don't want to, you don't want to sell those. I'll send you one. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. I love that. I would love that even before the other ones and I'll have both editions. Oh, right. yeah. good. Well, that makes me happy. You're so interesting. So interesting. So that's another way on see you guys. It's like, you know, I want, it's like intentional metal smithing is all about, um, you know, how just all these different fields that are within our field, you know, that's a lot of the things that I showed is the different things I did, different things you did. It's like, so the question of how do you stay inspired? It's like Richard is talking about how he stays inspired, but you're also talking about, you know, getting out of your studio, you know, where you're just making, making and taking in, like that's doing so much for your person and your work and who you are as a jeweler and, learning all this exciting new information. So it's just as big as being at your bench. A jeweler doesn't have to sit at their bench all day and night. That's that's a studio jeweler doing repairs, you know? Yeah, we're artists. We Yay! <laughs> Move forward. <laughs> no, I do love that, yes. Oh my gosh, okay, so, um, so that's your long term. Okay, so you actually have, you were telling me also that maybe some of your new work that you're thinking of and you're probably going to do, so you have a beautiful list of online courses. And one of the things you're thinking about is getting back into the cold joints again. You were right. Me. Yeah, I think that's an area that I don't do very much of anymore. And I know um, I haven't really seen any online classes that sort of uh, emphasize some of those skills, you know, riveting and, you know, wire connections and use of micro bolts and those kinds of things. Um, yeah, I, I think it is something that, that um, might go over well. I mean, it seems that the, the classes that I've done that are more, um, would you say, uh, skill-based or technique-based seem to sell really well uh, and better than some of the project oh. So that's good news. I like that because that's like where people are thinking for themselves and creating for themselves and you have a more skilled audience. Right. So that's yeah. good. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm actually, and Richard was also in Making Connections. That's when we first met. I wrote the book Making Connections and I'm actually rewriting the whole intro. I'm keeping some of the chapters. I have to get a hold of the artists again and make sure that they're good to be in there. And Richard's in there with his pieces. And I'm kind of, you know, I'm really getting in and doing some cold join work myself. So Richard and I were just talking and we're like, yay, let's do some cold joins, get them out there. It's really fun. It's such an interesting look. You know, whenever for me, because I watch markets, I think it's so interesting. It's like, you know, whenever um, a jewelry style runs its course for a while, it's nice to switch it up into something different, you know, a different look. 
Yeah, uh, you know, when, when everybody's doing one kind of thing, you want to, uh, it's oversaturated, you know, it's time, time to try something different, you know. But yeah. Things kind of go waves, you probably noticed. I mean, you know, trends and. Uh, yeah, and it's switching. It's actually just starting to switch a little. You think to cold joints? Uh, well, not to cold joints, but I, I can see the mark, you know, I can see the interest shifting up a little bit, you know. The thing about cold joins is that it gives it gives you a different way of problem solving. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's sometimes when you really can't solder something because of whatever perhaps the material you're using. You don't want to capture a piece of glass, and you know the the, the best way to do it is maybe with a something other than soldering something nearby. So I think it just helps you. Um, change the way you approach problem solving. It gives you options. Yeah, I agree. Let's see the ring that you have on. This one? Ooh, that is so nice. Is that like a donut around, I mean, a triangle donut? Triangle, uh, it's a turquoise inlay around a triangular piece of white buffalo turquoise. Oh my gosh, beautiful, gorgeous. Well, thank you. I'm not, I haven't done too many pieces of inlay. It's really something that I, I would like to do more of. And I, I do teach a class. In fact, next month I'm teaching a class in Wisconsin on doing the inlay. Where at inlay. Wisconsin are you going to? It's called Shake Rag Alley. Oh, yes, yes. I know Shake Rag Alley. In um, Mineral Springs, Wisconsin. Have you been there before? Yeah, I think I've been there three times previously three or four times it's really nice it's a nice facility uh and yeah nice people it's it's good it's a good spot pretty well equipped you know uh and any place i go now has to be pretty well equipped you know how we used to schlep oh my god stuff Say to it. go places like Eat <laughs> fest and the beating button and you had to ship so much stuff and then you're working on these crazy tables and i'm not going to do that no, no and more. how long would it take to set up like we would get there it would be like a six hour eight hours set up it, it just got so complex it started off easy right i remember when i first started i could bring two tool kits 50 pounds each and maybe ship something out there and that was with kits and everything in there you know right no it got crazy um so I'm glad to get away from that. So I'm only going to go to places that are fully equipped. Oh, and, uh, good. Well, I'm hoping you come out to Cleveland again. Uh, to mentor? Yeah. To flux metals? Yeah, um, yeah Kim did contact me. I, I'm just trying not to do I know, I know. One, one or two a year. But then, um, then it ends up just snowballing, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. You hate to turn anybody down and say, oh, well, that's a fun place. I'd like to go there, but yeah. it takes up so much time and I want to do this other traveling and photography. Yeah, but well, don't let, you know, it's like make sure that this other work that's exciting for you, it's probably where these hearts are coming from in your work, you know, because you're doing something that you love and that's important to you. This, you know, documentation and going to another country and really looking at another style of silversmithing. I feel now as I'm talking to you as a talisman expert, Richard, <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking that's where your hearts come from in your work. Okay. So I, don't I, lose that. You know what I mean? Like you don't put yourself on the schedule too much. It's hard to, it's hard to get it right. The schedule, you know? Yeah, you can do too much and not be very productive, um, you know, and I've, I've never been one to do production kind of work. I've never uh, done mass producing castings or anything like that. Uh, well, I've done a, maybe one or two castings, but, you know, uh, not usually. Everything is kind of one of a kind handmade, and that takes quite a bit of time and energy, so. Yeah. Um, so, hey, Richard, so I think Christina maybe might want to ask a question of how you market yourself, but I really, before, you know, how do you market yourself or do people just find you? I guess people just find you. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. It's like they, and they know you so well. You're, you're very well known by now. 
Yeah, after 20 years, you know, 20 year overnight success. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, um, okay. But a, lot of, a lot of it did come from the, the classes that I taught on the road, you know, so you yeah. build up a lot of uh, students that way. And then when the transition came to more of the social media stuff, the people, same people still follow. And then the, the whole social thing just, you know, it just snowballs one person and I don't know how it all works, but you know, people are finding you all the time every day. Somebody, you know, else is added usually. So, oh, so it, it just sounds like you just kind of work on what you love and let things happen for you. You just let things yeah. happen and it's been successful that fast. That's what it yeah. that's what I would say too. Oh, I love that. Yes. So you don't worry, you know, it's like Richard, he's mellow, he doesn't worry about how my, you know, you just do the best in your studio and people come. That's it. Of course, you know, I have a pension from my teaching, you know, so I'm not a, a starving artist and I'm not trying to make a living mm -hmm. selling jewelry like uh, that some people really have to and do. And I, I really admire those people who, who can do that, uh, make a living through their art. I don't think I ever could have, but nice supplement and gives me the freedom to do the other things that I like to do. So. Yes, that's right. And it's nice to stay in your field too. But yes, you are very well known. So it's good. Yeah. Well, so is there anything that you want to, um, any tips that you could give anyone? You, can you think of any tips? Tip. Yeah. Good. Um, I, I think one tip is to just put yourself out there and let people see your work. And even though you may not think you're ready, the, the feedback that you can get um, will help you grow, I think. I, that was one of the tips that, that I was given is to, to join, a, this is when I was doing some painting and sculpture, was to join a local art association and just you know participate in galleries and shows like that. Now you can just participate by putting together an account on Instagram and you can put your work out there. And whether or not you're selling, if you get feedback just from what people say, the encouragement that or uh, just the exposure, the confidence that you'll gain from that, I, I think that's really valuable. And um, just a little get it out there and let other people see what you do. And that would be, I think, a first step for anybody. Oh my gosh, I love that. Okay, that's a really good one. Good. There you are. It's your hearts. How would you believe it? <laughs> And there's, there is a picture of Richard. Wait, let me see. Yeah, that's a good, uh, I never changed that picture because I can never look any better. So <laughs> you look pretty good right now. Oh, uh, this one's a little darkened. You're light over there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I like you with your cowboy hat on. Do you still wear your yeah. cowboy hat? Um, I wear it every day. Yep. There but... you go. That's what I recognize Richard in the cowboy hat. <laughs> Not usually indoors. You were in Italy? Yes, I did. Oh, I bet people love that. We just came back from England. We did 10 days in England and uh, yeah, I wore the hat. I mean, what's nice about uh, is that if you go into a place time with a cowboy hat on, you come back, they remember you right away. So yeah, right. Yeah. It's a way to just break the ice and uh, people want to talk to you. Are you from California or Texas? <laughs> yes, right. Well, thank you so much. It's an honor, really, to be part of the whole book oh. and uh, just the interview and the exposure. I appreciate Oh, my gosh. I'm so grateful to you for all these years and knowing you all these years. It's just really nice. Thank you so much. All right.